Uh, okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, um, this presentation is about uh, the implementation of machine translation on the public external uh, website of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Um, I think it's important, uh, I will des describe the, this in the presentation, uh, to note that there are uh, additional factors compared to the technical ones when we uh, implement this in the context of United Nations and have to deal also with uh, the political position of countries regarding languages and the way they are treated in the United Nations uh, system. This Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a generic profile of the organization. Uh, being a United Nations organization, we work uh, with all countries and six uh, official languages that we have to uh, keep them uh, aligned in the sense that uh, provide information as much <coughs> as possible in all those languages. This is very uh, true for uh, official documentation, a little bit less uh, for public information on the website. Uh, we have offices everywhere in the world, uh, headquarters in, in Rome, Italy. And uh, starting last year, we uh, launched a new version of our website, which has an increased language coverage in the sense that we produce information in all six languages, but that's a very limited portion of the website. And the numbers of users and downloads are there. It's, I'm talking about five million, five and a half million of users per month and seven million documents downloaded per month. Uh, this is how the website looks like. Uh, all the sections that are linked from the homepage and were developed uh, recently and are produced since the beginning in all languages. However, we have uh, many, many sections of the website that are monolingual, basically English, uh, and also translated into not necessarily all the language combinations. Um, the way we work, and I think that's similar to most uh, UN organizations and other uh, international organizations, is that English is the language used internally, in particular when producing information, is the language in which we share information internally for reviewing, approval, etc., and therefore is normally the first language. Uh, regionally, we may have differences <coughs> Uh, with French in, in Africa, in Spanish in Latin America, but in most cases it is English the predominant language. Um, because of the, uh, being in Rome and maybe also in general the availability of uh, translators and translation services, we mostly traduce in French, into French and Spanish. So our language coverage is very low in Arabic, Chinese and Russian. Uh, because of that, uh, the members requested uh, additional efforts in those members being the countries, additional efforts in those languages. And as a compromise solution, we proposed uh, to investigate uh, a statistical machine translation to cover uh, those needs. Um, we started an internal development uh, using MOSES and related technologies. Uh, which at the end the result was very positive, but for us it demonstrated that it required a technical expertise that we don't have available. So uh, even if for certain uh, organizations with uh, increased technical capacity, that's a way to go. Certainly for organization uh, focused on food and agriculture, uh, it's more difficult to build that uh, expertise <coughs> and skills. Therefore, uh, we reported that to uh, our member countries and they gave us a sign to move forward uh, into this direction. Uh, therefore, we uh, started a new uh, approach which was looking uh, for uh, involving external partners, uh, private sector, um, and we uh, had uh, interesting uh, internal discussions, and I think that's the part that is, goes beyond technology, is to try to get agreement on who would be 
and what will be the mechanisms for evaluation because there are many uh, actors when you go into uh, organizations like uh, ours that we are about uh, 11,000 employees all over the world and 3,000 in Rome uh, that uh, the um, departments involved with the IT side of it uh, have their own logically their own uh, requirements on how such a tool can work but and also it was very important to get on board uh, the internal translation service which is responsible for the official translation of uh, documentation. Uh, as you know, in many uh, environments, the translation service not necessarily uh, see positively the developments in machine translation, uh, even if for us it was very critical to define the scope on what we will be, we will be doing in involvement since the beginning. So we developed a small project team uh, with the IT people, the translation service, and ourselves, which are responsible for the website, and uh, uh, maintain providing information to senior management and counties on what we were doing. Uh, the process was a little bit longer than expected. Uh, we had to jointly agree on the definition of requirements, what would be the methodology for evaluation in particular, uh, what will be the evaluation criteria, and all of this uh, was to prepare a, a tender process, I mean, getting companies to offer services and evaluating the services. Uh, the issues that are still uh, being, and we will see later, are about how we will, how we will measure the cost uh, benefit of all the entire exercise. Uh, we went to a traditional tendering process, I mean, it's traditional in the UN system, I don't know in other places, which is a, a releasing a spectrum of interest, getting a companies uh, willing to uh, present offers, eventually make a, re a request for proposals, and getting companies submitting offers. Uh, and here is a, an interesting issue for us, is that it was the companies that can offer services in all these three languages, in, uh, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian, and uh, actually we are talking about language pairs. We are talking about English to uh, Arabic, English to Chinese, English to Russian. Uh, it was very difficult to find companies that can offer all of them together. Uh, we receive offers of companies that can offer one or two, but the re replies for all of three were uh, limited. However, we proceed with the evaluation of the uh, valid offers. We uh, work together with uh, an institution which is specialized in evaluating this, the Bruno Kessler Foundation, and went to an uh, exercise of measuring uh, the offers, technically from the language translation perspective, in two different sets, one using uh, people <coughs> in sentences and getting a relative ranking on that, and also using the blur analysis. Uh, these are the final results of the evaluation. Uh, we uh, eventually, uh, one of the solutions proposed actually was uh, not a solution, was a reference, uh, it was Google. Uh, so eventually we went for the one that was more convenient uh, and could offer better results for the three languages. Um, we have implemented now what we call the translation widgets. It's working now in that address that you can see. Uh, here I have some screen captures, but uh, it's available on the web if you want to test. Uh, what is happening is, and this is an example, uh, we have developed often websites that uh, are available in the only three languages. What the widget is doing uh, in, is uh, adding uh, the, uh, navigation in the languages that are not available, uh, done manually, I mean done by us. And uh, imp so it's trying to mimic what is the normal navigation of the website as we have created it. A, a window pop up telling the user what's going to happen, like the fact that it's accessing a, a, a page that will be translated by a machine. And then the, the engine translates the pages into that target language and provides, uh, this, you see the text highlighted, 
uh, options for the evaluation of the results. Uh, on the top, the yellow bar on the top, is asking about a general evaluation of the page, or how that page has been translated, and it can be rated from good to bad. And the, instead, the little sentences in, in yellow below allow the users to uh, provide feedback at the sentence level. So for that specifically, explaining what would be the, the quality of the translation. Uh, the feedback mechanism, as we have said, is uh, now that we are deploying this, this more and more, is getting uh, feedback at the sentence level where people can say how good was that, and that's something that the engine then captures to uh, improve the results later. Uh, at the page level, which also gives us uh, an indication on how much users would be interested in having that uh, done uh, manually, I mean by a person. I think this is a very important point because uh, even if we are now collecting the information and we will have to come up back with a prioritization for human translation, this one is one of the uh, arguments that was very important in getting the buy-in of the translation service, that eventually this will bring demand uh, for translation. And then the additional feedback mechanism is a survey uh, where um, some users, we are trying to encourage more and more, provide general feedback on the implementation. It's not so much on the linguistics, but on the implementation. <coughs> uh, the lessons learned. Uh, things that we have learned in the process is that when the pages are not designed since the beginning for uh, rendering other languages, uh, we have more problems in then using this translation widget. I mean, uh, the example I shown earlier is a uh, Russian, uh, which you probably know. It normally, is the text uh, needs uh, develops in more space compared to English, while Arabic and Chinese tend to be smaller. Uh, Russian tends to be larger, and therefore, for pages that are designed in English with the text just exactly, uh, we have problems in, in putting together the translation into Russian. This doesn't happen when we do the website since the beginning in all languages. Uh, the other problem we have found is that Arabic is giving us more problems than expected, not only technological, but also the fact that Arabic seems to be very different from Morocco to the Gulf, and even the linguists no, do not necessarily agree on the way things are translated. It, it, this is true for human translation as well. But when the machine is responsible, is the feedback normally is more negative uh, from the people reading those languages. As I said earlier, another important uh, lesson for us has been that uh, we have to keep the translation service, internal translation service involved in the beginning because they are very helpful in the evaluation. And at the same time, a, a key a actor on how these things will develop. Uh, we found problems in convincing uh, managers in our countries, which are the ones that pay at the end, on the benefits of, of all of this. And we tried to find literature on the web, and it was very difficult. So I think that's an area where uh, we see uh, improvements are needed, and I hope this presentation goes into that direction. Uh, as I said, uh, planning, uh, we learned that uh, we were very optimistic with the planning. Uh, it took us longer. Every process was longer than expected, perhaps. Uh, the complexity of uh, leading with, uh, dealing with these three languages at the same time, because of their own complexities, added to that. And we are still learning, learning now in how we will deploy uh, and how we will move forward. Uh, our next steps is to finalize this text phase, uh, test phase at least now. I mean, we, we have now known on the web, and then uh, next month we want to define internal policies on when the translation widget can be used. I mean, this is very important for us because in a moment of uh, financial restrictions, uh, we don't want to oversell the technology and then encourage too much people not to translate anymore because there is this solution. So, we have to find the right balance. Uh, keep informed all the time, all the actors, and we have found that this is very <coughs> critical to the success of the project. 
And in July, we plan to deploy it in, in the uh, official website of the organization. Um, this is all. I, I invite you to provide us uh, with any feedback you may have uh, to this address. Thank you.